having studied CBSC till 10th grade and then coming to Gujarat board was like, how can I study something which is limited to 50 pages of textbook? I studied in a better environment, so doesn't matter what what I will get, but I will have a good education. So I continued and there I am at the end of 12th grade. <laughs> that okay no no admissions happening in MBBS in a good college at least sir. and I was also a bit adamant uh, not accepting any college across the country with a uh, you know, self finance or such mm -hmm. seats to accept as a degree for doctors and stuff this had also reason that my parents are are not, I mean, they are well to do, but not, not so rich that I would want them to spend so much money for me yeah. to get a degree. That whole concept also did yeah. in my head. So at that moment, I said, okay, that is it. Twelfth grade, no education, no further needed. I will do whatever I want to do in life, but I don't know what I will do. That was that was a. A blank statement then. Okay. Till then I had never heard of architecture. I can imagine. Till then I had never heard of uh, anything except engineering or medicine. Mm -hmm. Then, after a few days of that 12th standard result, 12th grade result, my sister studied in uh, MD Arts here in this yeah, campus yeah. of Larbai. And she lived uh, in the hostel where she had, uh, at, that, at that time, I think for set students, it yes, was a El common uh, hostel. Yes. Munsha was the common hostel. So she had experience of architects and interior designers as her friends in the hostel. And then at that moment, after a few days of this whole jugglery, she brought it up that look, I always felt that someone from us if is so creative because I find these people very interesting and creative. But since you were always focused about medicine, I never talked about it. And now that you don't want to do anything, maybe it's a good idea to at least go and have a look at it. Maybe it interests you, but there is no pressure of any kind that you have to do. And that's when she got me to set first time. And that was my entry to architecture. And so you decided to give the entrance and all. Huh. So that's when I said, okay, this is at least not engineering, which yeah. is so boring and calculative and manipulative. And that was my impression because that's what was taught and discussed. And that's the exposure to engineering till 12th grade that, okay, engineers work like this. Doctors work like this, and this is how the society works, and so on. And also, probably the taboo that engineering is for men. I mean, that's how I, even I knew in my childhood. Till then, yeah, yes. that was the the exposure. Even in college, it was, and I that know. was uh, how it is. And then I felt, yeah, I mean, this place looks different mm. and not biased to these social uh, structures, and and at least there is no pressure of it. So I can give it a try and I took it as a challenge to be honest that till now I didn't know anything about it and there is two level of entrance exam. So that was what exciting for me that okay I don't know anything and if I cross this bridge that means I should be fit for it. <laughs> And uh, I will not be doing uh, uh, engineering because I was so stubborn that if I don't do medicine, I would not do engineering for sure. Mm -hmm. So that was a, also another motivation that this is not engineering. Mm -hmm. That fulfilled my mindset and this was you something end up in an engineering situation now. Almost. Interestingly, in my master's degree says master's in architecture engineering. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how I came and I gave exams like others who have given two 
level exams and I got in the list which was of course where I didn't stand in first 10 uh -huh. because out of as I said yes. the intake was out of 40, 30 would be uh -huh. from Gujarat board and 10 would be from all the other states, all the competition of admission where my number was somewhere I think in in late 20s, 30s, as a pushta. So, set me to minna was impossible and I was not even expecting because I didn't. Uh -huh. Because you were not even planning for it. Uh -huh. I didn't ever plan. Uh -huh. I had no knowledge. And when I came for entrance exam, people would come with these big portfolios carrying fancy drawings and measuring with pencil. and So, basically, they were trained uh -huh. to sketch and to prepare and for giving this exam. And I would come from home because I lived two minutes away. I would even go back for lunch break between the two it's sessions of the exam. <laughs> so interesting. <that> <laughs> and come back and give the exams happily and go back. That you lived so close to set for so long in your childhood, but uh, no, but like I did not stay here yeah, for yeah, so many years. When you came to Ahmedabad, you started living here. Huh? When I came to Ahmedabad, also for a year, I lived in Thantej. Uh -huh. I only came to Navrampura in my twelfth grade. Okay. And as I said, my sister knew about all of it because she was in the same campus. But since I never had any inclination about yeah. it, uh, I was not yeah. exposed to this. And I was going from school to tuitions and home. That was my 12th grade life. And I liked to read a lot in those days. So I would order extra reference books and thick, as thick as it could be that I could absorb the knowledge. And uh, it, I think, helped because yeah, it, helped. it helps building your personality yes. that you are exposed exactly. to a larger yeah. knowledge bank. Tell us, tell us something about uh, the college life where uh, towards your end of architectural uh, studies, uh, were you really feeling uh, what next? Because I think we all went through that situation that. Uh, everybody wanted to be the biggest architect possible, I'm sure, but uh, <laughs> were you again doing, planning something that what next, where, what, how, and all those things, and how did you cope up with it, and where did you land up after your graduation? So, uh, when I was going to graduate, ninth semester, I had Sonal Modi, Sonal Mittal mm -hmm. Modi, which is at SET now. Mm -hmm. She was teaching us mm -hmm. at uh, SCAT, Sonal. Mm -hmm. And uh, she is a very influential person, mm -hmm. I would say. She taught us conservation okay. in, uh, as a semester course. Mm -hmm. uh, and at that time, she had uh, so, major portion of our course was on Champanir Pavakar and mm -hmm. she was also researching with uh, Karan Grunar at that time and mm -hmm. he was working on Champanir. Added to that, she had uh, uh, visited Rome mm -hmm. and uh, hence she had also shown how conservation mm -hmm. in Western world is seen. And so, that whole exposure of conservation from her had uh, kind of taken over my mind mm -hmm. and it, so because of that ninth semester's uh, influence two things I did in my uh, undergrad one that we were supposed to write this 10 pages research paper mm -hmm. as a sample of learning mm -hmm. I took it on Jaipur mm -hmm. and my thesis I based the whole thesis on housing in Jodhpur which was uh, a site for uh, uh, at the foothill of Umi Bhavan Palace. Karan Guru was yeah. doing it. So I thought it would make sense that I want to go in this direction and I start yeah. taking yeah. steps. So I did that. Hence, when I graduated, I was completely taken over that I want to do conservation. Okay. And I said myself that okay eventually I will pursue my masters in conservation but SEP didn't offer at that time yes, that time it was not it was Delhi SP uh -huh. and uh, so this is 2005 mm -hmm. when I graduated first degree and uh, so I thought look almost 10 years exactly 10 years after me huh? 
Really? <laughs> so perfect sampling. <laughs> so 2005, I, as I was conscious always at the time of admission or when I graduated, I always felt that look, going from Ahmedabad to Delhi for a master's for two years, I really have to be sure whether I want to do this forever or not. So I decided that I will work for a year and then pursue masters rather than going straight uh, from one college to the other. What if I really don't find? So there was this thought in my mind. I had two options to uh, join office. On one hand, this is my first choice of conservation. So I, I just felt, as you said, Minakshi Ma'am, Jain sir, the best people known in conservation yes. as students would be there. So I came back from Surat, finished degree, made my portfolio and I said, okay, I'll go to Jensen's office. Mm -hmm. So I came to SEPT, I tried to find out contacts because there are also people who don't have website or any address or nothing. No, no mobile. No phone, phone, no mobile. So I came to the reception, I found somehow the way to reach them. And I went to their office and at that time Jensen Minakshinam had gone to uh, their younger daughter's graduation. So that's in London. That's in London. And uh, Anab's graduation. So uh, Jashi Ben of her time, she told me this thing was I get. I went with Akshi Ben to uh, sometime mother to her. She's not there in the office anymore. Nah, I know that. That's why I said Jashi Ben of her time. <laughs> told me this day part I am you come after 20 days. So I said okay. And then I thought what is the second chance? What if yeah. I don't get here because they are the best people. So I might not be the best fit yeah. for them. What yeah. is yeah. the you go to that office? Should I take her office or at their no. house or at the house? Or they are already moved because I did my training. Then them. Then them. So then I thought okay, what is the other option? And we other option I didn't really, I mean, I, as I said, I'm very stubborn. What I want, I want is excellent, otherwise I don't take it. So, conservation went to, I didn't find any alternative to myself. What was the other option? So, I had Shivanan. Shivanan Swami. Yes. Uh, they were researching on BRTFF. And it was the first year of first engineering intervention, by the way, almost. No, so I didn't join them. So that was the other option. And I went to Shivanan sir with my portfolio because of some reference from a friend's father or something. And I went and I told him that uh, I want to work, but I really don't understand infrastructure, to be honest. So if I could join, first you will have to train me and then only I'll be able to deliver something. So he said, okay, but what is your choice? So I told him very frankly that my first choice is Jensen. I went to him. He is not there right now. <laughs> and that's me. I would just say straight forward. Yeah. Black and white. He is not there right now. And that's why I came to you. Uh, also the fact that I don't know whether they have vacancy or not. And I also don't know whether they would hire me or not. I am just with this work of mine of five years and if he will find it work then I will go there otherwise I would come to you <laughs> and then he said okay then I he suggested that look if that's your first choice you wait for few days and uh, if you don't get there then come here uh, because he had RL at that time I was working in the RL really? <laughs> <laughs> so he said ki haan, there was this person called Arjun and though teen log the aap honge usme se well, he named ki Arjun sa ke mil lena main usko bata deta hu ki ye ladkiya hai to isko rakh le so i said okay so at least my one side was secure ki kahi nahi mila to main ghar se idhar to aa hi sakti hu then jensen came after 20 days i went they were working on Mehrangarh for uh, I mean, of course they were working on Mehrangarh for, for I think no, 12 I mean. years before that, since that duration and 
मैं नाचे मैंने बस दो ही ना हर बार for probably thirty years नागौर आई वो नागौर था नागौर नागौर was even longer but मेरांगर का there was one stage over documentation was complete and damage assessment was to begin and I probably went in that right time then he said okay you know you are have you ever done such thing I said no but you will if you teach me I'll learn it quickly so I said ठीक है and then he asked me a few questions like how basic how are you with traveling or how are you with leadership and because like मैं तो eighth grade से GSC मैं तो ये थी मैं तो वो थी my parents don't mind मैं तो boarding school में रही हूँ मतलब in short मुझे तो कहीं भी फेंक दो मैं वहाँ काम करता के वापस आ जाऊँगी so everything will get done just that technically you will have to train the way you want otherwise very fellows are all sorted so he was also smirking <laughs> at that time then uh, Arya sir walked in when I was being interviewed by then sir and Minakshi ma'am so he said uh, you might have met uh, him I said yeah yeah he had come to receive an award in Sugar for for their uh, Samakhyali project so I, I got in my face and one of my classmates was trained in Arya architects so then he felt ki chalo connections established she at least knows who is who whom to follow and she can deliver so I was hired and I was happiest so then you worked there till you left for Delft or no so I worked for 6 months extensively on Mehranga of which I stayed in Mehranga for 3 months so day of my hiring and the third morning was in Mehrangar Fort Jodhpur. So I went with a team of four interns with me and Jen sir, Arya sir both came the next day of our arrival in Jodhpur and then they walked the whole fort and explained and all and I was supposed to do the damage assessment of the whole building and I was given the set of documentation part by part so that they have finished the measure drawing so measure drawing was done so the documentation set of 10 floors and sections and stuff was ready with me I had to go room by room to check problems, damages mark them on plans and elevations whichever drawings didn't exist we had to add to the whole portfolio and then was the time after that 6 months we came back to office and there was the time of compilation of the report where we had to then suggest the solutions one by one. So there were typical damages which were to be solved like this and specifics and so on. And then there was a design proposal. So I finished that whole report on Miranda in I think 8 months and ninth month was printing and I finished compiling completely. Anjali Jain was leading the compilation part and I was then continuously there from damage assessment to the completion of report. I did it. I did it to the best of my abilities and knowledge. Throughout the process, I understood conservation is not for me. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, in the process, did you uh, uh, did you uh, really feel about uh, gender uh, in the uh, process, or was it okay? Uh, with Jen Sab, I know it is really not. I idea. think I am blessed <laughs> uh, uh, that I I did not come across any such thing till I was in the conservation and with that kind of environment. Because it was, office sent me to Mehrangar and Mehrangar felt uh, Madam has come from Ahmedabad so they would be very respectful and especially when I was team leader going with four trainings they were imagining as if I was so experienced and I would sometimes feel that please don't, I mean I don't deserve so much of respect because I am fresh graduate, I know nothing and for one or two weeks that kind of conversations would happen between me and the 
engineer there or if we need the curator there and it's cultural also in Pakistan. Uh, and slowly I realized that it's part of their culture and it grew me very well that I was this little jumping and dumping doll here as a response. So I started having my feet, you know, stronger and sort of responsibility on shoulder and I would behave in a different manner. So it really groomed me, I would say. I evolved from that experience where, okay, now your college days are over. <laughs> Jumping around is over. Now you are an architect. I am an architect. I should carry myself in certain manner. And yeah, it helped. Yeah. But not yet. Uh, Anything uh, life changing which really helped uh, or directed you to uh, get into your master's well in health? Because that's where we met for the first time. But that happened uh, later on. Yeah, so, so after this nine months, I I kind of understood that it is Minakshiman and their sir who could do conservation, who make the conservation look so good. <laughs> also, that who can continue to do that for yeah, so many years. Uh, it requires a lot of patience, it requires a lot of uh, experience. And it also requires a certain uh, networking through which you would get work. Yes. That is perfect. So, I mean, to go and stand in front of that Singhji is not... Uh, he would not even need me. Something like that. Or to, for example, Minakshi man walking with Vasudra Raji. They are not going to even talk to me. So, those kind of uh, understanding I got when I worked in their office very closely because I was also given that kind of opportunity. But I knew it very well that they are talking to me right now because I am representing Messrs. Minakshi Jain Akira. Not because I am Udvish. <laughs> so also other thing that I realized after that wonderful report is that in conservation there is a lot of repetitive work. There is a lot of restriction in terms of like what is built 300 years ago. You have to respect that material, you have to respect that technique and you have to find solutions within that. So uh, as young architect, that was a lot of binding and I wanted to do a lot of innovative stuff and you know, as every young person, I had aspirations that there should not be binding in our life, which conservation would imply as a profession. So these were the two major reasons where I felt that, okay, it was a good decision to take work experience in this field and then pursue a master for long term work. And then I felt, okay, no, I am not going to be able to do conservation. But I was always working in Arya architects. Though I was working for Jensa, I, I always sat in uh, Arya Architects, which is a separate office mm -hmm. in one Bhumi apartment. And hence I had constant uh, interaction with their architectural practice. Yes. I would see everything, how they work and both. Both, both. both. and either that was their Arya. Both, both used to work and both used to teach every time. That's it. That is also one of my uh, minds. <laughs> to be interviewed, I, I, let's see. I think yes. uh, you should. So then I felt that probably this is more where I think. And hence I started, I told them that if this I did, then I'm there. But now I don't feel that I want to pursue a long term career here. So if you don't mind, I can continue to work at Arya. So they were also very generous. They said, okay. So they found also sincerity at least in me and uh, some capacity. So I continued to work with them. And uh, at the end of one year was my deadline to myself. And I was once again conservation to architecture to clear that. But what in architecture as specialization was not clear. By then, both of them said, uh, look, you can go for masters. But if you realize one or two buildings, that will also teach you a lot. 
years. What sometimes academics cannot teach, because academics is important. Lot of things of profession comes only by doing stuff, yes. which each other cannot, you know, satisfy the needs. Unfortunately, there's still a gap there. But at that time, I felt okay. Yeah, that makes sense. And I was working on key projects like the war complex, which was in Exposto. I was working on sports complex yeah. that is built in my core into the. It was all exposed R C C, and uh, I thought that okay, I made a lot of drawings according to their you know, imagination and guidance, and very beautiful looking drawings. And I wanted to see New York, so I decided that okay, just a masters for one more year, I'll stay and let this building stand. And during that course of another two years that I spent with. Hmm. That I gave myself that time that I want to see this building done. Then also it would be another realization like this conservation experience. That when the project was over, I realized the nuances of it. Similarly, when I realized these two projects, I will have yes. clarity. So till then the clarity was that there is a lot of fight between architects and engineers, <laughs> design and yes. structure yes. specifically. Did you see the gender fight in that period? Uh, a lot. <laughs> like for it, yeah. a lot. For my first, example. my first encounters were in Udaipur sites, this Rajasaman district, we were on the sites, where uh, I would go. If I would go with the Arya sir, those days Nigel had been travelled so much. Mm -hmm. So first few visits when sites were introduced, then I was uh, accompanying him. It would be fine. And of course, when if he is there, yeah, I am not see. really, I don't even matter whether I present or not for, for the rest of the team on the other side. And it was RTDC for whom these projects were done. So, I would go and I would understand and see how he convinces the engineers or how he handles things and stuff. But, there were times that when project came to, you know, on sites and execution, it was always not possible for him and me to accompany us. Yes. So there were moments when I started going on site independent of him. So it was alternate then. That if he goes, I am not going. If I go, he is not going. And in those times, first time that I went alone, I wouldn't take the name of the engineer, but the, the engineer in charge from RTDC didn't even come with me on all the sites. Okay. okay. He felt it was just a... It is scale. It was just a visit which was not important. So he sent a... sent his person, not even engineer, a person who can show all the sites. He escort you. To escort me, then it was at the car, And then I was like, okay. This person there was no discussion then. No, there was no discussion. I made my observation. And as usual, as I was trained in the office, I made a long site visit report, which uh, office approved, and it went to RTDC. That's when he realized that this was really official visit. <laughs> and that's when he probably also realized that this girl understands. It's not that she is just coming on site as a you know, sightseeing. sightseeing or showpiece that she is just roaming around and enjoying the beauty. Because the sites were very ah, scenic. Beautiful scene. ah, they, they are located in very nice uh, locations. So then the next time I went, he had a bit of uh, this is official, but he would still feel a bit of hesitance. You know, it was but then so now did he take did he eventually take instructions from you? Yes. Or after two or three visits like that, the cultural barrier overall. I would see not only cultural but it was also hierarchy. Mm -hmm. Because he was the engineer in charge. Mm -hmm. And I was a junior architect in mm -hmm. the office. I was not the principal. Mm -hmm. 
secondly men and women uh-huh. then uh, the junior engineer of his uh-huh. could go but i would argue yeah i was not experienced enough also to i was very strict that i drew this line it has to happen that uh-huh. if i wrote this material nothing can change uh-huh. so uh, i was not experienced enough uh-huh. to understand that how much and what percentage yeah, of uh, uh, on-site, on-site uh, I can take decisions or yeah, I should yeah. accept uh-huh. what contractor has done and respect what is the constraints of site. I, I, I was wrong. Mm-hmm. So I would feel that if I drew this and if I could draw this, you can make it. Don't give me those arguments. That's the way I used to talk, mm-hmm. which was probably not helpful to you. Mm-hmm. And uh, slowly I learned. So one of the last site visit I remember that we went, Vikram, uh, Ala sir, one of the intern, and myself was on this uh, site where uh, the whole this is Vijay Smarak, and there is a whole uh, yeah. huge wall mm-hmm. cladded in uh, stone, which we had recommended. Uh, it has to be. Stone. And for few site visits, the work was not done, so every time we were insisting that finish this, finish this. And during that visit, we went and the whole thing was planted with quota stone. And I was like, oh, how can this happen? <laughs> and then, uh, since Aras and Nigam both were there, uh, they decided to take it. Because they understood that yeah. area may itna yeah. quantity may stone lana to this remote site was not possible and the reasons being it is. So they allowed and also this tender item versus what can be executed and what can be replaced and all those uh, the government project, section. the details. So they so sir allowed and I was like I had a fight with him <laughs> literally on site. That how can you do that? I I mean that's not allowed. And later man would be like, Mita Shant ho jau dai. Rasta was telling me. And then I, probably that was the moment when I started realizing that I need to learn how much to push and when to let it go. When to let it go because there are constraints and uh, that is very important. When to really put your foot down and when to when to let also contractor be comfortable, otherwise projects don't happen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's true. Okay. So they played a major role in uh, my deciding to go to Netherlands also. Yeah. Because once again, working with them for three years almost, uh, also uh, had an influence that uh, RSR had pursued his master's in Finland. Vikarman uh-huh. had pursued yes. her master's in Georgia Tech. So then I, that was the time, then I started feeling the need that maybe uh, international exposure really changes yes. your yes. life. Yes. But uh, once again, coming for a very, from a very um, moderate, normal Gujarati family, I knew that my parents cannot afford uh, my foreign education. So if I am wanting to do this venture, I will have to find a way myself. Yeah, finance, yes. So finances and also way and uh, also clearly that what masters I am choosing which is really not offered in India. Mm-hmm. What is the knowledge that I am searching which is not available in India. Mm-hmm. So that took me almost a year to figure out that I really need something which is bridging architecture and structure mm-hmm. in my my entire struggle since then was so to find to Indian Yes, it yeah. was then. It was, I think, uh, a year before I went to Netherlands. Yeah. Since then, I was shaping it. That okay, I, I, if I want to really design something out of the three meters by three meters grid, that means I have to have my structural concepts clear. Yeah. Till then, this is not happening mm-hmm. because I always saw uh, Arya sir. Sometimes teaching the structure engineers or explaining them that, you know, these are the five alternate methods in which you can think structure. Mm-hmm. 
So please give me a solution out of these if you can't think. These are the concepts. Now give a technical answer to it. So then I felt that man, he has that knowledge, and hence he is able to he is able to convince the engineer to do what he designs. Similarly, if I want to do something out of the blue, or as I said, three meters by three meters beam column grid, then I will have to give those concepts to engineers that I am thinking on this concept. Please bring me the details. Of course, I can't sit and do all the technical drawings of structure design, but at least my fundamentals are there. Yeah, has to be there. Mm -hmm. And that led me to do this course, architecture engineering, which I. <laughs> and uh, then move to computational design and digital yeah. application because that was the time and that is what was offered there yeah. at that time the best which bridged this gap in my opinion. So From there to uh, back here, uh, did you find uh, options of uh, that kind of work uh, back here in Ahmedabad or how did you really? Uh, get into this transition mode. It was very tough. <laughs> <laughs> Before, I mean, you return a little bit it's earlier. A big, and, uh, it's a big struggle. I uh, think it's it's a big struggle. Uh, you came, I think you came two, uh, two years before me. No? You returned yeah. two years now. Yeah. Yeah. I came back immediately after my master's. Immediately in the sense after two, three months. Mm -hmm. I did not uh, stay there to look for a job. Mm -hmm. The biggest reason was that I landed in Netherlands 2009, which was the year of financial recession breaking mm -hmm. in the Western world and in Europe and everybody panicked and a lot of offices closing in 2010, mm -hmm. Dubai closed, mm -hmm. China closed, a lot of Indians working in those countries mm -hmm. the for 10, 15 years returned to India and they didn't know what to do. So obviously there were no jobs uh, for non-EU yes, and Indians specifically. And I think there was also a limitation with masters that you could stay. Even if there was a job, you could only stay for one year first. So there was one year work search permit, which I had got. Mm. Even though I came back three months later to India, yeah. but I had that permit, and with that permit, I went back also yeah. once to attend the workshop in Denmark. Yeah. But that one year work search permit was uh, uh, something that you could stay for that full year without doing anything, for example, jobless, if you can sustain yeah, yourself. I capitalize this even after PhD. <laughs> I'm sure I'm there is a reason for it. <laughs> of course. Of course. I was anyway not living there so so much as I was living <laughs> in <Yeah>. your paper. <laughs> but I think uh, I did not stay back strategically knowing that there were no jobs. Uh, we had even long my even my time. EU friends were struggling yeah. and they were getting jobs like uh, interns. Mm -hmm. And for me. Once again, it was a low point where I would not accept the fact that after pursuing masters and three and a half years of work experience, I would be hired as an intern. Mm -hmm. That was a bit uh, of a problem in my head, unacceptable kind of position. And secondly, I went there on a bank loan for education. So once my degree was finished and my education was finished, I wanted to also pay it back as fast as possible so that my parents are in it. Because of course their properties were at stake till I finished this loan. It was huge. <laughs> so I decided to come back and uh, once again, uh, it was Arya Vipes. They were working on stadium project yes. at that was moment. That good, uh, no? no, Ahmedabad, Kankaria. Ahmedabad, Kankaria. Kankaria. So they uh, said, our job, mm -hmm. we always have space for you. <laughs> and if you feel like working on this, then you can contribute yeah. with your newly acquired knowledge. Yeah. So they were the one to support what I studied there first. Yeah. Yeah. Rest of the Ahmedabad is still kind of neutral and numb about yeah. it. Yeah. 
but they were the one who said okay out experiment on our building and we will see where we go yes and uh, that was i think decision making point because there were no jobs there there were internships yeah. hardly paid and then here somebody is giving you an opportunity to experiment on a building which is a football stadium yeah. of scale which i don't think i would uh, get it by stage in my life uh, so i said okay i'll come i'll work and then that's why i came back and i started working and simultaneously i was paying my loan back and i was making my way in the beginning two three years i had no work except then whatever they gave was the work and whatever they paid was my pay but i was i was adamant once again i was sure about it then that this is the direction i'm going to yeah. pursue for my life i'm not going to go back to the regular 3 meters grid i'm not going to do anything which is uh, ordinarily done by uh, architects around because i have aspirations of doing something which is based on the skills i acquired at dev and slowly i evolved with it with the understanding and maturity with the fact that it has to have meaning it's not for the sake of making difference yes it has to add value to people's life it has to add value to buildings it has to add value so it it started becoming always oriented to science quality science of maturity yes slowly i think so okay. it always started getting diverted i mean in the direction that okay it's not just for the sake of standing tall and different i would rather go merge in the ground that's how i try to do sometimes landscapes and with the boards and stuff but they really don't don't stand contrast with the nature but lot of it also is inspired from minimal surfaces as yes. nature the forms so those are my opinion forms that are performing with nature and something which is sustainable in that manner but always that one consciousness about any shape that i generate or any any design that i make should not have this added layer of efforts to put lot of structural members and you know energy to make it stand as that form so it emerges out of structural concepts so there is a vast difference between it's it's similar if i take references mm-hmm. it's a it's a difference of work between frank gehry and fry otto yeah okay mm-hmm. as simple as so it's always coming structure is part is a very is integral thing. part of design and if i can't solve the structure i will change the design if i if i can if i have to add another layer of extra member of structure yes, to okay. make that form stand i would change the form i would optimize it based on structural requirement so i want to do things which go with minimal energy spent on it but still work differently and still work more that you can inhabit it naturally so it's now when i is from there to the director ship and now i know that you are also practicing and uh, you also write paper now so what is, <laughs> what is this journey what is this journey what is this i think is purely the interest i wanted to know from there to directorship of uh, set workshop set workshop directorship came uh, simply that uh, i was set started summer winter school program yeah. so since nobody found uh, any platform at that moment for my practice which was my kind of burning desire when i got back i will have my practice based on computational design and digital fabrication that i've learned and i will do beautiful buildings that i imagine myself beautiful <laughs> and then i realized that okay not too many takers here <laughs> uh, and uh, set started summer winter school program which was again led by meghan ma'am uh, and 
she invited that okay lawyer, there will be courses offered it mm -hmm. was first time mm -hmm. so she said that why don't you try giving a workshop to students mm -hmm. here and let people see what you are doing mm -hmm. and we see then where if it fits in academia better mm -hmm. because lot of these experiments even till the date and lot of uh, the research in this direction is limited to academia yeah. Specifically yeah. in in this direction where I am, yeah. if you count the number of practicing architects in India, you can really count on fingertips. Okay. They are very few. And if you count it internationally, also there are very few. So like you said that if you are asked to give ten women architects, so somebody you asked the uh, somebody who is internationally practicing this would also be very few, which would include uh, Avis and uh, mm -hmm. Norman Foster's and yeah. Zaha Hadid and such. So large companies and then few uh, like me who would associate with them to feed in. Mm -hmm. But they also have their own R&D unit within yes. their office. So in my knowledge, this is what it was in 2010-11. Now scenario is different, but yes, this is what it was. So I was invited to give a workshop in 2013 when summer winter school started. Mm -hmm. And the first workshop I took in set was digital crafts, generative design. Mm -hmm. I, I remember that. You remember that? And that's when uh, President Bimal Patel, he saw me at the end of the exhibition time I was ambitious as usual. I got things designed, I got the prototypes done and I had put a restriction on students that unless you make a prototype of one is to five scale, we will not build one to one. But the overall agenda of that workshop of through three weeks was to build a life size installation in steel, SS sheet metal. So during the exhibition, I was still making <laughs> with the students, with the with the fabricators. I was still making, and we were part of the exhibition. Yeah. All the people who came to see, they had panels to visit, they had uh, videos to watch, and then they had us to see yes. making. <laughs> the thing is coming up, <laughs> and I think since then it remained in his mind that this girl is somebody who is hands on and who believes in getting things done and making and so on. So when the uh, former uh, coordinator of SEP workshop, which Shakti Ben, he was here for a year and he was to go back to his hometown, Chennai. When he suggested Bhima Patel that in my position you take her, and he was absolutely convinced that, okay, you've given me a good replacement. <laughs> and when I was hired, so he said, uh, Jay Thakta was director at that point, and uh, Shakti Vek was coordinator. And uh, I, when I was called for a formal interview about it, what do you think and what? So I said, okay, Shakti Vek is saying that I will find my interest here about making and stuff, so I will definitely respect his uh, vision as well as what do you think about my work because I then came with my work for two years and a half what I did and he felt that maybe so then he changed the positions and he said okay all the responsibilities of director and coordinator is put in one person which is you so that's what he decided on the spot and I was given that position in 2014 November that okay do this and since so this then I took now it. five years now yeah four years and few months so they, it, probably you came full full circle so your parents must be happy that uh, you at least took the engineering side if not the medical side <laughs> <laughs> my parents are happy and they are proud of me for what I am today yeah, I'm sure. and they feel uh, I was 
what we call in Hindi very ziddi bacha, very difficult kid. Since we are three, the two were very easy to get convinced and controlled. <laughs> I was the one prepared, but they feel worthy. That your all your uh, decisions and all the zid were conscious, and then you put in so much energy behind it, efforts for it that it came positive. Any message for women in, uh, in this field, uh, architecture in general, how should they conduct themselves? The message is that never think of gender. Okay, very, very true. Even so if it is around you, preparing all think. the time, hmm. do not pay attention. If you are doing your job consistently and qualitatively, everyone will respect. So do you think that this kind of uh, it is really not uh, required if gender is so uh, neutral and equally respected? No, I think it is important and what you are carrying out is valuable because what you are doing exists. It is just that I happen to be a person who is ignorant about it. Yeah, so that's a message which you would like. Huh, so that's why I am saying that it's always there. Now look at this workshop. I held the workshop and I have staff of 10 people working in this workshop. All of them are men. Not that they don't respect me. Not that they uh, resisted any. But it's an academic environment. But let me tell you honestly that if they have something to share at personal fronts or some problems at work, even till the day, they go to my executive officer, share with them and, and he comes, comes with it to me. Yeah. So they will be hesitant. So uh, even they are a bit hesitant and that is now. Now as I said, imagine myself 10-12 years back when people were not even listening to me and didn't even count me when I was in a meeting. Mm -hmm. So not that I didn't come across this situation. When it's I, better to be ignored and to ignore this and present as a gender neutral. I think just do your work consistently. That's the only way I believe and I have adopted for myself. Actually, actually, our profession is to some extent gender neutral, but it is just that it is it does not get portrayed in the society. That's where I, I was curious about my own study. No, what, what your curiosity is to some extent and to a large extent exists. I repeat once again that it exists. So if I think of myself to a, to a larger scenario, for example, if I, so last two years and a half, I had been making only proposals. None of my projects came to life. Well, that's, that's a global problem now. It's a disaster <laughs> problem. It was also purely because, okay, you are dealing with a corporation, mm -hmm. which is full of men, authorities, people. The biggest but mayor gender is bias. Mayor is woman. No, I never came across her. Uh -huh. I would love to. I kept asking for appointments, but I could still not reach her in the day. Till now, whoever officer I came in contact with, except for the latest commissioner mayor, rest of them all, if I go and stand in their office in front of them, they are hesitant to even have eye contact. Because they normally don't come across women at that position or at that stage. Now, this has been my experience. I don't generalize it. It will be true for all the women and so on. But I experienced this. But those experiences of mine never discouraged me to go and stand in front of that person once again. Because I would give that time to make him comfortable yes. that, you know, I am also a human same, being and I am huh? architect. Don't see me as a woman standing in front of you and feel hesitant. But you can tell me whatever is the discussion here. And it takes a bit of time. Yes. So you have to give that time. 
So it becomes a longer process. Yeah, I guess probably uh, in your generation, things have also uh, in a tra are in a transition phase. Because if you are now uh, 10 years, 15 years, mm -hmm. so that's probably the change also. We can, I, I will be able to see after I talk to people of I, your generation. Yeah, I don't know yeah. because I have, interestingly, I have worked uh, with a corporation. Yeah. I have no, seen private client. I have uh, uh, worked with academia, so I deal with students. I mm -hmm. handle the workshops. So, since I am able to do several things mm -hmm. in one day, I come across various experiences. That's also something which is coming from common across uh, the women whom I am interacting now, formally and informally. That the multitasking is one of the things uh, we uh, are actually doing by choice or it is just coming to us, I, I really don't know. But anyway, uh, <laughs> that brings to the end of our conversation. And thank you so much for giving your time and also enriching us with your experience. My pleasure.